Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Holy Thursday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Puerta. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather to celebrate and to mourn. We have our celebration of this Last Supper of the Lord. We bring to mind our own sins, our own complicity, the sufferings of the world. We ask the Lord for his forgiveness. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to, to God, God in the highest and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For You alone are the Holy One, You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death entrusted to the church, a sacrifice new for all eternity, a banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of love and of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month they shall take every man a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then a man and his neighbor next to his house shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat. You shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs in the evening. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses 
in which they eat them. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. In this manner you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will strike through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you upon the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall fall upon you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as an ordinance forever. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. The second reading is from the first letter to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the chalice, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. A new commandment I give to you, says the Lord, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God, and was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and tied a towel around himself. 
and he poured water into a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not know now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet. He is clean all over. You are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, You are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Matthew, Mark, and Luke report the events of the last meal, the Paschal meal that Jesus celebrates with his apostles, the focus is on the taking, the blessing, and the giving of the bread and the wine. For their communities, the focus that gave them identity or made them different to everybody else was the meal. When Cardinal Roger Mahoney of Los Angeles spoke of the church being a Eucharistic church, this is what he was referring to. It is the Eucharist that gives the community that we call church its identity. But notice how different John's Gospel is. The breaking of the bread, the blessing of the cup, is covered in one single sentence. And during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him, he rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and tied a towel around himself. And what then follows is a description of Jesus washing the feet of his apostles and his teaching about service. If the Synoptic Gospels are all about the Eucharist, then John's Gospel is all about servant leadership. What characterizes John's community is their spirit of service, the idea that leadership is something that is at the service of the community, not for domination. The reading for tonight ends with Jesus saying, I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. In the early days of our democracy, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was established to bring some form of closure, healing, and peace to those who had suffered the unbearable weight of suffering and loss that apartheid had brought. Adrian Flock, a minister within the security apparatus of the state, came forward and during his testimony admitted to ordering the assassination of Frank Chicani 
who at that stage was the Secretary General of the SA Council of Churches. Much later, when Frank Chikani was Minister in the Presidency to Nelson Mandela, the Secretary reported to him that an elderly Afrikaans man was waiting outside and would like to see him. Well, he agreed to see him. The person who came in was Adrian Flock, carrying with them a basin and a jug of water. Adrian Flock wanted to wash Frank Chikani's feet as a sign of his sorrow and his contrition. We do not know what happened in that conversation, but we do know that Chikani allowed Flock to wash his feet. Leadership gurus most commonly list five characteristics of servant leaders. They talk about valuing people, of humility. They speak about people who listen, who trust, and who are caring. In this symbolic action, the symbolic action of the washing of Frank Chikani's feet, I think both showed signs of servant leadership, even though the journey which both had taken had led them on very different routes. Like Jesus, we can value people for who they are and not for what we can get out of them. We can show humility in admitting our mistakes, humility in admitting our need for forgiveness. We can take the time to listen to people, to listen to people with whom we fundamentally disagree, truly listening to understand, and not just to get enough ammunition to shoot them down. And also, how can we really care for others if we do not develop a deep empathy for them? This then is the servant leadership that Jesus showed, that he modeled for his followers, that we learn from. People like Frank Chikani and Adrian Flock also try to practice in their own lives. I've given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Let us stand and together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we recall the night when Jesus gave us a living sign of his enduring love, 
Let us bring our prayers before our gracious God. Christ nourishes the church through the Eucharist. By the sacrament, may he root our lives in his death and prepare us for his coming in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ spreads a table where all are nourished. May we advance along the paths of justice and peace in the strength of this food. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ's sacrifice opens us to life in all its fullness and mystery. May we sacrifice ourselves for all who are starved in spirit, mind, or body. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ washed the feet of his disciples. May we learn that the gift of salvation binds us to serve each other in humility. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ gives us the Eucharist as the pledge of everlasting life. May those who have died find everlasting joy at the banquet of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, hear the prayers we offer you at this commemoration of your Son's life, death, and resurrection. Fill us with his life through our sharing of this meal and answer our needs in your loving kindness. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through whom we make our thanksgiving to you, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. As to you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Yes, God, forever. By mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ and with himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. This is be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for I will be good of all God's holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim. 
commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat this flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, which without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never stop gathering a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly pray, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup filled with wine, and again, giving you thanks and praise, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, to be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his coming again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain our inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant prayers we rely for help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Butitlachale our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered here before you. 
and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that your glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Gathered as the sons and daughters of God, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. So, my brothers and sisters, Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy really that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so may we enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.